All right, guys, cleaning the glass on a car. This, uh, this video is going to be particularly aimed at cleaning a windshield, uh, properly cleaning it, and doing a full, actual polish to it. Uh, the best way to clean any windshield is to actually polish the glass. Uh, you can do it by hand. You can do it with an electric buffer. In this case, I'm going to actually choose to use a pneumatic tool. I'm going to be using an Ingersoll Rand. Take a look at it right here. Ingersoll Rand pneumatic air polisher. It's got two different speeds on it. Very nice. Got my compressor charged up. We're operating at a little bit. We're at about 100 PSI pounds per square inch. And we got the tank, you know, charged up about three quarters of the way. But uh, we're going to start with a simple process of just cleaning the windshield before we wash it. Now, a lot of contaminants get on a windshield, guys. Bugs, uh, grit, dirt and grime. And as you can see, the car is in need of a cleaning as well. So, while the, the majority of people out there would want to just take a, a bottle of Windex and spray it with that and clean it and call it a day, that's not going to really work in this case too much. Yes, I noticed the glass orb as well uh, floating around. So, I hope there's a ghost in here. But what we're going to use are some easy products today. Now, I've got some microfiber rigs out here. i got a bottle of Windex out here, multi-surface, and i got some glass polish. I'm going to use some just cheap, basic stuff. Uh, this is from the Automotive Detailing World. You can buy it at any website. I don't believe it's available in stores, but I'm pretty sure you might be able to pick up some glass, glass polish in an automotive store like AutoZone, O'Reilly Auto Parts, and places like that. So before we do the polish, we're going to actually need to clean the windshield. And what I'm going to use instead of uh, Windex right away is a very simple and easy thing. I'm going to use some hot water. It's not filtered or anything, but I got it from the tap, you know, so it's kitchen sink water hot with some car wash soap in there. Uh, some car shampoo detergent is going to be the best thing to clean it because if we use, say, dish soap or something, uh, it could strip all the wax off. And while we're going to be doing that polishing it anyways, the water and stuff is going to drip over onto the paint of the vehicle. And if we're using, say, dishwasher detergent, that's going to strip the wax off the body. And while we don't want to do that, um, we're going to try and, you know, keep the wax on there or the sealant we've got on here by using auto you know, wash, some uh, some regular car wash shampoo. Now in this case, I am going to be polishing the entire car and posting that video as well on how to polish it and remove scratches, even dents using a stinger gun at some point. But, um, you know, I'll get to polishing the wheels. I'll do everything for you guys. It, 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 this, re this vehicle requires a complete winterizing detail, which is going to mean stripping everything down off the, all the wax and sealant off of it, taking every scratch out, looking for any possible areas of bare exposed metal where rust could occur. Even if we do see rust, we're going to be sanding it down. We're going to be taking a spray gun to it and painting the panel. Uh, and then we're going to be clear coating it and everything and making it look back to original factory conditions. So we're going to be going all out with this car, guys, but I just want to show you how I'm going to do this. And I'm going to be starting using my sponge and bucket. Keep in mind, I do have a grit guard in the bottom of the bucket and I'm not using a lot of water because I'm not actually washing the entire car right now. It helps if you're using a, a brand new wash mitt or towels, but in this case, we're going to use just old, regular, dirty stuff. Okay, as you can see, the water is steaming, so it's quite warm. It's pretty hot to the touch. We're just going to get our wash mitt saturated with water. I'm going to go ahead and squeeze it out, leaving a little bit of water on here. And we're going to get to wiping. Now, I'm going to really start from top to bottom, but I'm going to make sure this windshield gets clean. Then we're going to go over the rest of the car. Now, another thing to point out, guys, is you can see how the water is kind of beating on there. That's because when waxing my car, looks like we got a little overspray right there from some polish at some point. I'll go ahead and take care of that type of stuff. But um, from waxing the car initially and putting the synthetic paint sealant on, it's a good thing to remember to actually wa uh, wax and seal the windows as well, whether you're using a carnauba-based paste wax or a liquid-based sealant synthetic type sealant so it is important to remember to get all the windows as well that way any rain or snow or dirt and grime is going to actually beat off the windshield and not stick as easily but more importantly be easier to clean off i'm just going to turn my wash mitt over i'm going to hit this another time with a fresh mitt here or sponge and then we're going to go ahead and get it with windex once the windshield is completely dried down with a basic microfiber towel. 
Now one word about the grit guard is it comes in very handy in use when you're washing the entire vehicle or just a simple item like this. You can go ahead and kind of rub the wash mitt or sponge against the grit guard and it'll help contain any of those contaminants or granules of dirt. Help them fall to the bottom of the bucket and not contaminate or get back on our mitt. It looks like this is just almost done, ready to dry. I'm gonna go ahead and get it dry and uh, see where we're at. Another thing to pay attention to, guys, is I'm already noticing a bunch of discrepancies on the interior of the glass, so we're gonna have to uh, address that afterwards, which means going into the vehicle and not spraying the windshield directly from the inside, but spraying the microfiber or towel or even uh, paper towel from this point on and giving it a complete wipe. One thing that comes in handy, guys, is also a windshield wiping sponge type deal. It's a little mitt that you put on your hand, and instead of the towel actually like moving and creasing every time you wipe up and down, it makes it a little bit easier to kind of reach over the dash and kind of give a good wipe and defog it. A lot of times Rain-X makes what's called a defogger and stuff, just a little pad, you know, meant to defog the windshield while you're driving so you don't have to really crawl underneath the dash and make sure you got every little spot. All right, it's looking like this is pretty clean. We're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna kinda do one side at a time, guys, to show you what a difference this makes. All right, looks like we're pretty much there. I'm gonna go ahead and dry the windshield now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take a clean microfiber, guys. I'm gonna use the buffing side of it to absorb a little bit more because it's got a higher pile. And I'm just gonna make sure this windshield is completely dry. It doesn't need to be 100% completely dry, but pretty much dry enough to give it a good Windex coating and wipe down. All right, looking like we're pretty much done here drying it. Go ahead and get that center. And we'll be good to go. Put on our Windex. Like I said, it doesn't have to be completely 100% dry, but you want to be able to see what you're going to be polishing and where you're going to be focusing on a lot. In this case, it's going to be the indentations that the wiper blades have put into the windshield. If you can see that kind of, I'll back out here and you can really see how many discrepancies this windshield actually has. It doesn't have any cracks or, um, you know, dents in it or anything or no chips or anything, nothing like that. But uh, you can use a resin refill to fill those in as uh, Safe Flight Repair, Safe Flight Replace does. So make sure we got this guy all over here dry. Alright, he's looking good, folks. Let's take our Windex to him now. Make sure to keep the microfibers clean, too. Don't put them onto the floor. If they do, they're contaminated. Don't throw them away, but throw them in the washing machine. All right. I'm just going to get Now, in this case, I'll just spray directly onto the windshield. I'm just going to take my Windex, my multi-surface right here. It is a disinfectant, too, for indoors. But go ahead and spray that guy on. With the same cloth, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to take the same microfiber, other side of it this time, and wipe them down. Okay, that did a little bit of a better cleaning than just the shampoo did, but in all regards, the shampoo is almost going to do a better cleaning than the Windex is, nine times out of ten. Just the Windex is more or less your finalization cleaner, so to speak, so there's no streaks or marks running across the windshield. That's the main point in the Windex, is if you're not going to take the extra step and polish the glass. All right, we're looking good. Let that Windex off there. It doesn't really matter if you've got the Windex completely off because we're polishing it, guys, meaning that everything's coming off of this windshield, including any coating we've previously applied, like a Rain-X or anything. Polishing it's going to get right down to the actual molecules of the glass and get everything off. All right, there you have it. You can't really see the other side, how dirty it is, but you can kind of tell there. And we're looking good. We're going to start to polish it now, folks. Okay, to polish it, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna, in this case, I'm gonna connect my pneumatic gun up here. I'm gonna shake the polish up real nice. And I'm just gonna put like three to four dots on our little foam. Now, I'm not using a cutting pad, I'm not using a buffing pad here. We're just doing a light cleaning polishing of this windshield. If I actually had little cuts or abrasion, you know, abrasions in the glass, I'd be using like a yellow, you know, cutting pad to do this or a buffing pad. But in this case, I'm just going to use a small, this is three inch, three and a half inch, little foam applicator pad type deal. All right. All right, that's looking good. So I got just a nice amount of glass, glass polish on there, folks. Actual, a lot, actually. And what I'm going to do before I start polishing to avoid all the spray back, and he looks like he's 
dropping a tongue out right there. <laughs> but uh, before I'm gonna, you know, actually start polishing them like this, I'm gonna apply it to the windshield so that there's not a bunch of overspray and bounce back of this polish all over the car in the garage. So I'm just gonna apply it basically directly to the areas that I wanna pay attention to, which is those windshield, or those, uh, win you know, the um, windshield wiper marks that have embedded into the windshield right here. I'm just gonna get that real nice. I should apply all this polish to the window. And we can go ahead and do every window on this car this way, folks. Tinted as well, but you just would never want to do this to the inside of a tinted window where the tint material is actually on there. So, all right, especially those spots where any rocks or abrasions would have happened to the windshield. Get it all coated on there. All right, now we're going to connect our pneumatic gun and get to polishing here. All right, you want to make sure there's no air leaking if you're using a pneumatic type system. Well, like I said, this is an Ingersoll Rand 2 speed. We're going to start on speed 1 because that's when there's going to be the most overspray. And then we're going to go from there. So this is going to be very easy. You need at least 100 PSI in your compressor to do this. A small little 20 gallon I wouldn't necessarily trust, but anything over 30 to 50, even an 80 gallon is going to work perfectly, folks. So I'm just going to get to doing this and we'll be good to go. Watch this. Looks good. I might want to go over it a couple more times to get all the areas, and then we're going to be good to wipe down. All right, and the second time you do this, you're going to want to go up and down to make sure you've got complete coverage. So I set my, this is actually an odd type of gun. Uh, setting number two is a slower setting than setting number one. I started out real fast. You probably want to do the opposite, but I'm trying to get this junk job done quick folks so just make sure you got uniform coverage of the windshield up and down I like to go the direction of the wind you know and uh, keep doing you know keep doing it as many times as you want to get those uh, you know discrepancies out of the glass and then you're ready to wipe all right we're almost there that's gonna be how our windshield is gonna look as its final result we've gone over it a couple times put a little bit more polish on about three to four drops each time we made sure to go up and down up and down I also want to make sure too that you keep the pad flat onto the glass or any surface whether it be a panel or glass the entire time you're polishing so keeping it flat and moving up and down with the direction of the wind member otherwise there's a chance you could see some swirls as you were going all around in a circle and whatnot so we made sure to keep it up and down getting uniform coverage of the entire windshield okay so it looks like we had had we did have some overspray as you can see right here so that's going to help when we actually wash the car and wipe that all down clean that all off make sure we rub in all the little intricate spots and stuff but now is going to be the time when we buff this off just using a dry microfiber towel and buffing it off guys all right folks now comes our buffing time we're going to take a different microfiber as you can see this is a different one it's not exactly a brand new one, but it's a clean one. What we're going to do is we're going to first take the low pile side, so the wiping side first. We're going to try and buff off all that polish, get it off nice and up and down straight uh, movements. Then we're going to flip the microfiber over. We're going to make sure to fold it in four spots too, and we're going to get this windshield superbly clean. All right, I'm just going to start to got my microfiber folded in fours like this. I'm going to start to just buff it off. And you're, yep, you don't want that to happen either. You don't want it to get all crinkled and ruined like that. So we're gonna, yep, and it's real hard to kind of rub against the window right now the first time. So that's why you kind of want to start it, something like that, but then get it moving. And it's looking like we're pr looking pretty good. As you can see there, there's not much stuff left over. This windshield's almost revived back to brand new. So I'm just gonna give it a good wipe like this. Sometimes it's easier to go in one direction, either up or down or both, but you just wanna make sure you get everything off of it. And as you can see, I wonder if you can see that, but if you look real closely, this windshield is almost in perfect shape, guys. 
I'm gonna see from this side kind of down. You can see a nice glossy reflective surface where all the images behind the glass are all visible and whatnot. And it's looking pretty darn good. I almost don't see any discrepancies in this glass at all. There's a little bit more polish left on there, but if you'd like afterwards, you can even take another spray of the Windex, kind of help you to kind of lubricate this microfiber and wipe this down. Plus it'll help clear up any overspray you might've had or any stuff that you don't want to be sticking onto the windshield soon. So we're looking pretty good. I'm gonna back up here and kind of show it. As you can see, I still got some wiping to do, but it is significantly clearer than the other side after just wiping it down. I mean, just wiping it down really doesn't do it enough. You gotta really polish this stuff sometimes. I mean, it's had years and years of driving on the freeway at 70, 80 plus miles an hour, dirt and grime, stones hitting it, so. These really deserve a good polishing every once in a while, guys. I'd probably say once a year at least, but it's important, especially when you're winterizing the car. And that's what I'm gonna be doing soon here. I'm gonna be getting ready to winterize the car. We got our different tires put on. We got a Continental DWS, which stands for Dry Wet Snow. I'm gonna be taking those rotors off. Instead of the cross-drilled and slotted rotors, I'm gonna be going with a regular OEM-style rotor from Brembo. So yeah, there's some changes we're making to the car. We took off our uh, Michelin tires and we put on our Continentals. We got, uh, you know, sealant to put on, polishing to do, any bare metal to cover up and seal the entire car so that it's, uh, you know, kind of fighting against the salt buildup and whatnot as it goes through the winter. So I'm just gonna continue wiping this down, guys, and I'll show you the after product here. All right, and we are almost finished. I'm gonna go ahead and step around the other side of the vehicle so we can get a good look at how this looks. But there were abrasions all in this windshield. There were little spots and everywhere. Now, because I didn't use a cutting pad, we're not gonna get rid of those tiny, tiny, tiny little imperfections in the glass here, but we did help to clean the windshield as, as much as it possibly could and try to avoid any deep cuts we would have made with like a compound or a, a real uh, intensive polish. All right. Well, keep in mind, guys, that when you do polish this glass, it's going to be very susceptible to scratching if you are using a dirty rag or say it's got some uh, dirt on there, some dirt granules. If you're wiping this directly after polishing, you are embedding those granules deep into the glass, actually, so it might never come out if you take a uh, dirty microfiber towel to it. So I'm going to walk around one more time, take a uh, good look at how the car looks windshield more or less and we're gonna see somewhat if we can the difference here's the other side and there is the clean polished side looks significantly different I wish I could really capture it visually for you guys here but it's just not doing it with this camera so you're kind of unable to see all right well if you enjoyed this video if you want to know more about automotive detailing stuff or other questions concerning cleaning things and polishing whatnot, taking dents out, taking scratches out. Next video I got coming up is I got a scratch that someone put in with their door. So they kind of opened their door at a gas station, you know, next to me, and it put in this little scratch right there. So what I'm going to be doing is taking a swirl remover. I'm going to be polishing this on us after I clean the vehicle, and that's going to be bye-bye. So all scratches, goodbye. And it's also going to remove all the swirls, any other nicks that are in the paint there, and we're going to do this whole door panel for you guys and look good as new probably better than new again once we put on the synthetic sealant and really buff it down and wipe it it'll shine with a black glossy wet look to the finish all right well, one more time kind of walking around just to get a view at how good that windshield really looks now It's almost flawless, guys. The marks that were there from the windshield wipers are completely gone. Uh, keep in mind, too, you can also use this for headlights. So if you've got a headlight restoration job that you need completed, this is easily the first thing I recommend doing. If this isn't going to do the trick and they're extremely yellowed, then you might have to buy the Mothers or the 3M type sanding discs, either wet sand it or dry sand it and then kind of polish it after that. And I can guarantee you, uh, give me any dirty or yellowed, you know, weathered headlight cover like this or housing unit, you know, 
the lens and I will get it clean with polishing it. So it can be done. It's a way to save money. You don't have to buy new headlights. Um, but if they are, have you know, if they've contained moisture buildup inside the headlamp assembly like this, it's time to throw them because that means that there's a, 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 a leak and it's not 100% sealed anymore, guys. So you probably want to get a new headlight housing unit at that point. There you have it. There's my polishing the windshield or gla you know glass when, uh, video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you like this video and want to see me do more on this vehicle, which I'll be doing a ton of stuff to, we'll even be polishing the wheels. I'll be taking this pneumatic polisher to the wheels and getting those wheels looking 100% perfect. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already, guys, and take care.